War welcome to all of you. My name is John Hillary. I'm the Director of War on Want. I'm here today representing the Hands Off Iraqi Oil Coalition, which we're going to tell you more about in a little bit. Tonight is a fundraising event, as well as being an opportunity to hear Naomi speak. It's a fundraising event for two causes, and um, we're going to hear a bit more about them in a second from Amy Yashivitz from the Hands Off Iraqi Oil Coalition. Thanks, John. First, I want to say a little bit about the Iraqi Federation of Oil Unions. Uh, this is a grassroots movement in Iraq of workers, primarily in the south of the country, which is where the bulk of the oil uh, of the country is held. And this is a union that is organized from the bottom up. It is it's completely independent. It is not affiliated to any political party. And it's a union that has been fighting the agenda of corporate occupation, of economic occupation of the country, which is represented by the intentions of international oil companies like Shell and BP and, and further afield, and Indian, Chinese, all number of oil companies want to control Iraq's oil through long-term agreements lasting a generation, lasting 30 years, that would effectively mortgage the country, not only to a fossil fuel economy, but to the interests of multinational oil companies for 30 years plus. Um, the union has experienced um, a lot of repression from both the Iraqi government, from the occupation forces. They've, the leaders have had death threats, they've had arrest warrants issued, um, attempts made on their lives, and every day that they're struggling in Iraq, they're at risk. But they're taking these risks because they know that really Iraq still belongs to the Iraqi people. It should be controlled by the Iraqi people, democratically, free from occupation. It's the that has stood against the occupation and demanded an immediate withdrawal of occupation troops from the very first day of, of its existence. And this is a position that we have as Hands Off Iraqi Oil, and it's a position that the vast majority of Iraqis have. So supporting the Iraqi Federation of Oil is also a way of supporting a movement to end the occupation of Iraq immediately. Hands Up Iraqi Oil is a coalition of, of developments and anti-war and um, environmental organizations, Platform, uh, Jubilee Iraq, Voices UK, uh, Iraq Occupation Focus, War on Want and Corporate Watch are all part of the coalition. And we've been going a year and a half and part of our work is to support grassroots civil society organizations in Iraq to organize against the occupation, against oil theft, against the oil privatization. And also for us in this country to target our oil companies, Shell and BP, who have been really leading the pack when it comes to promoting oil privatization and that agenda. The good news, the very good news, is that Iraq's oil is still in the control, effectively, but in reality, of the Iraqi people. It's, it's up for grabs, and we have to make sure that the Iraqi people take control of that oil and not oil companies. So I'd like you to join with me, please, in welcoming Naomi Klein. Thank you. profits 
off of the carnage in Iraq, climate chaos, the mortgage crisis, the so-called war on terror, and the global food crisis. And it may well be your idea of fun. Indeed, studies prove that this is your idea of fun. What studies? That's a very good question. There was a study that came out. Uh, it came out last week on my day, as a matter of fact. And it found, you may have seen this study, it played very big in the United States. I'm not sure if it played that big in Britain. But it found that conservatives are much happier than liberals and lefties, progressives, as we now call them. Now, this was a serious study. It was conducted by psychologists at National Science Foundation, which is an independent US government agency. And it pulled people inside the US and also around the world on their state of well-being and their state of general happiness with how things are going. Now, the study found this. Uh, now, you might be thinking, well, conservatives are happier because they're richer. Uh, and, and the conservatives said, well, we're happier because we're in nuclear families, and that just makes people happier. Now, that's just not true. Um, the, the researchers took out all of these variables, OK? Uh, marital status, income, um, and they still found, I'm sad to report, that conservatives were happier, or at least claimed to be happier. Now, the reason for this was quite interesting. What the researchers found, it was a team of psychologists from uh, New York University, what they found was that conservatives are better able to rationalize social and economic inequalities. Do you understand that? They are better able to feel fine with, with the not fine. And this fills them with a sense of well-being. Now, progressives, apparently, not so much. Um, here's what the researchers explained. This is a quote. They said that progressives lack ideological rationalizations that would help them frame inequality in a positive or at least an unusual light. And so when they get pissed off and anxious, and when pollsters call them at home, they tend to use the opportunity, it would seem, to express some of these sentiments when asked how they're feeling about the state of the world. I think it's safe to say that these researchers are on to something. Um, and, and I often get asked, uh, for some reason this is, this is quite a preoccupying question for a lot of people, um, if, are these neoliberals true believers or are they just greedy? This is something I'm supposed to know how to answer. Um, and the question is essentially, do these ideologues honestly believe that by ramming through mass privatization, deregulation of the financial markets, corporate trade deals like the Miliband Boys, gutting social programs, that societies will actually become freer and more prosperous and everybody's lives will improve through these methods? Or is free market theory itself a kind of a scam and these ideologues are just doing the bidding of the wealthy while tricking the general public into believing that these policies will benefit everyone. And what I actually believe, this is even before I had scientific evidence, is that the truth is really in between, that the ideology isn't a conscious lie, a malevolent lie, but neither is it you know, an honestly held truth. Rather, it's more like an elaborate form of self-deception, otherwise known as rationalization. What free market theory does is put a moral veneer on the accumulation of obscene wealth alongside the creation of great poverty. It lets you feel good about it. Um, now, I think the reason why we need this sort of a rationale is fairly clear, because our current economic model can't help but raise uncomfortable questions about the ethics of inequality, about the cost to the planet of the limitless quest for growth. Um, and so along comes Adam Smith and Friedrich von Hayek and Milton Friedman and even Ayn Rand, Lord help us, to say that being greedy by maximizing your personal wealth, you maximize the overall good in the world. On the other hand, by trying to do good, you will actually end up doing harm. So leave the do-gooding to the invisible hand, maybe a little bit of charity on the side, but leave the rest to the trickle-down, 
to the rising tide. Now, anyone who isn't lifted up in this process didn't want to be any 